Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It's good to see you again. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that whenever I make a new upload, you will be duly notified. <laughs> And we expect the supernatural to, 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 to happen at our word. And when we pray, you know, mountains must move and, and demons must tremble. I want to let you know that there is a powerful word in store for you today. Recently, led of the Lord, I delivered a sermon in my home church. And I don't want to tell you what the title is yet, but it came from the book of Job. And I want you to grab your Bible, grab your notebook and stay tuned, share this video with someone else, because this is an important word for our day, our time and in this season. You don't want to miss it because guess what? God speaks. All right. So I want you to work with me this morning as I will be making references to some scriptures and I'm hoping that I can see them ahead of me so I can read them out. Please turn with me to Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. And I will be reading the New International Version, from verse 1 through to verse 10. If you are there, say amen. Job chapter 2, verse 1. On another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to Ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. Let me pause here for a little bit. Skin for skin is a proverb that they used in those days. And pretty much what, the, what Satan was saying is, Job was serving God for selfish reasons. You know, he had this hedge of protection around him. And this is chapter 2, so you know, one of his tests had already gone. And he was still serving the Lord. So Satan was saying, if you allow me to touch him, him, the person, Job, he will turn against you. So it says just, you know, so, so that's what he means when he says skin for skin. Skin for skin. And, and he continued by saying a man will give all he has for his own life. So we're at verse 5. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones. And he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. 
So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. You know what he was scraping off? Remember he had sores, you know, you know what is inside of sores? And his body was full of that. His entire body. So even when he was sitting down, some of them burst up. Couldn't sleep good, couldn't turn sideways, no peace at all. His entire body from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. And poor Job, poor Job. Mm -mm. Job sat down and scraped himself as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, somebody say in all this. In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. I want to begin by saying that it is a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. There are benefits and there are blessings associated with serving the Lord. The first thing is that him clean you up, forgive you of your sins. Give you peace of mind. Prepare a place for you in heaven. Give you hope, a purpose in life. It is a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. A joy, a jubilation, a blessing. The reality is though, that there are many of us believers, and I want to speak to believers today, specifically, who have certain expectations of God. True? Yes, man. You have expectations of God. We not only expect him to do the things that I just mentioned, which he does when we invite him to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. But we expect God to do some things for us when we are living for him. We expect prosperity, wealth, or at least financial stability. We expect health. Not true. When you when, when get certain diagnoses from the doctor, you know, I uh, hear that. May I serve God. Oh, this must uh, happen to, to me. We, we expect easy victory over challenges you know we don't mind the challenges but we don't want them to be too hard too much stress when we are serving god we expect protection and power that we can just speak the word of healing and it manifests or we can drive down the road and, and, and speak that house into being and it, and it manifests. You know, we expect that the word of our mouth will cause things to come into being. Not true. We hear that all the time, man. We expect the supernatural to, 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 to happen at our word. And when we pray, you know, mountains must move and, and demons must tremble because I... I'm serving the Lord. We have expectations. We have expectations. And I, and I also want to say that the truth is, if there were no benefits and no blessings associated with serving the Lord, me wouldn't bother with it. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with having expectations of God when you are living for him. 
But I want us to be clear that when it comes to serving the Lord, a concern only for oneself is a totally different thing than having an expectation of God in eternity. Now let us talk about Job a little bit. Job's devotion, and I want to just give you a backdrop because we did not read chapter 1. So I'm going to summarize it for us to set the stage for where we're going and what we need to hear this morning. Job's devotion to the Lord was wholehearted. He had complete integrity. And what this means is when the Bible says he was blameless, it means that he was morally blameless, upright, that he walked wisely before the Lord. I think the King James Version says he was perfect. That perfection is not that he was sinless, but that he was consistent in his spiritual life. So Job enjoyed the protection of the Lord over his family and over his property. He was the wealthiest man in the land. And, you know, the devil could see that hedge of protection that he had from the Lord. Which is why if you read chapter 1, you will see where the Bible makes that clear and, and how Satan was kind of talking about it. You know, like in bad mind. You know, he was saying, but, but you have this hedge around him. So, you know, that's why I'm serving you. So, Job was wealthy. Everything was going on well for Job. And, and I imagine that he was having a regular day. The Bible says that in the morning, every morning, he went to offer sacrifices on the behalf of his family. He was acting as a priest of his household. And when he offered these sacrifices, he would say to the Lord, just in case my children sinned, I want to, to, to stand in the gap for them. I want to ensure that they are okay. So, you know, Job acted as priest and, and every morning he would do the same thing. So, Job was having a regular day, going about his daily activities, did his early morning sacrifice and, and all of that. When just like that, his season of adversity manifested. And I want to make it clear because sometimes we read the scriptures and, you know, we read it and we see it, but we don't really put ourselves in it. And, and I wanted to think about if you were in Job's position. His season of testing manifested. Job was not eased into his adversity. When you read chapter 1, a series of tragedies begin to happen. So one servant come to give him the bad news that look here, your sons and your daughters, all of them, seven sons and three daughters, they were in one of the children's home and they were having a feast and a big wind come and the house dropped down upon them and all of them have died and I'm the only one who escaped to make you know what go on. And the Bible says, while that one was yet speaking, another servant came. And while that one was yet speaking, another servant came. And that is how a series of tragedies. Just having a regular day. And this is what happened. Like rapid fire, all in one day. Job lost his wealth and he lost his children all 10 of them in one day and let us read together his response according to the scriptures in Job chapter 1 verse 20 through to 22 the Bible says at this Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head then he fell to the ground in what? worship? really? Job? He fell to the ground in worship. And the Hebrew word there translated worship is laying prostrate in the presence of God. He was expressing as a symbol of humility in the presence of God. That's what he was doing. The shaving of the head and the tearing of the robe is a symbol of his grief. And Job said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked, 
I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And the Bible says in Job chapter 1 verse 22, in all this. Somebody say in all this. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Mm. That was Job's first test. It is not clear how much time had passed before the second test, but it seems as if it was not a very long time if we understand the mourning period of the people in ancient days. He was still mourning because the Bible says he sat in the ashes while he was doing that. But after a little while, a short time, while he was still grieving for his children and maybe his wealth too but i think based on the profile of job he was more he was mourning more over his children than the other things job fell ill with a skin disease a skin disease painful sores all over his body what would you do if you were in job's position and I wanted to think about that carefully. Because while he sat there in his pain, physical pain from his skin disease and emotional pain from the loss of his children, his dear, 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 dear wife, the woman who was close to him, the woman who he married, the woman who was the mother of his children, in the midst of his pain and suffering and i don't know how satan does his thing but after getting permission from the lord <laughs> i don't know if he had some dust that him go blow but clearly wifey get a touch from satan and she assumed the role of temptress when she said to her husband made a suggestion but she played it safe by asking the question are you still maintaining your integrity and i want to borrow this question from job's wife today and use it as the topic for this message are you still maintaining your integrity i wanted to find somebody close to you and ask that question are you still maintaining your integrity? You know, that, I, want to, I want you to put that on your WhatsApp status. That must tweet. Are you still maintaining your integrity? The account of the life of Job helps us to understand God's sovereignty and the role that he plays in the adversity that righteous people may face living right living right and adversity just does not seem to go hand in hand and i want to tell you that the people in job's day did not believe that living right and adversity go together at all and that is why when his friends came, and I find it interesting that the friends did not come when he lost his children. Some time had passed, the friend them come when him get skin disease. And they spent seven days in silence until one of them said, No, Job, I must sin your sin. Make you go through all of this. Something not right. Because living right and adversity just don't go together that's what they believe and and even today people still believe that it should not be so and i want you to really think about this because have you ever 
or perhaps right now you might be going through some kind of adversity or disappointment or trial or testing have you ever gone through some things and while you are in it you thought to yourself this should not be happening to me this should not be happening to me not be happening to me at all Lord, I have loved you. I have served you. I have lived for you. I depend on you by your grace to live right. I have this denied the flesh just because of my commitment to you, God. No, sir, this should not be happening to me. Why me? Have you ever been in a situation where because you know in your heart of hearts that you are living for God. You say, no man, I don't understand this kind of test at all. I should not be going through this. And you know, you say to God in your prayer, and maybe you have not been there, but I have been there. So me will talk for you now. And me couldn't understand what I want. The least you could have done, God, was to just give me what I prayed for, when I wanted it, and how I wanted it. And, and, and just, just give me, why you can't just bless me? I don't understand, God. Why me? I after living for you for so long I don't understand I, I, I just can't get it what is it with you God that I could be living for you and these things are happening I should have been promoted in my job by now I have been faithful and working and working I reach a work early and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do I go above and beyond but I can't get promoted why me God I should have owned my home by now have I not served you for so long and I've been trying for so long and I can't own a home yet come on now oh God I need you to help me Lord I thought you would have fixed that relationship by now why me have I not served you with all of my heart the single people lament God I should have been married by now why me look how long my single God and then the married people them I lament God it look like me married to the wrong person why me have I not lived for you God I want us to understand that there is a kind of mindset that we need to address this morning in the, in the believer's heart because it is important for us to recognize that there are some situations that God allows in our lives and we need to understand what is going on. The childless woman is saying I should have been a parent by now while there are some parents who are saying these children are about to drive me up the wall what is going on why me lord why did i have to have a child that was born handicapped why is my child rebelling against me have i not served you god have i not loved you have i not fasted and prayed and done everything that i was supposed to do and yet why me this was not supposed to happen to me but let me tell you something church the sooner we realize that God takes a very strong interest in our holiness over and above any level of comfort then the sooner we will see purpose in our trials and I want to say that again the sooner we realize that God takes a very strong interest in our holiness over and above any level of comfort the sooner we will see that God has purpose in our trials the world would have us to believe or would like us to believe that righteousness 
that moral blamelessness, that uprightness is a recipe for disaster. The world would have us to believe that living righteously before God is a characteristic of the weak and the stupid. Well, righteousness, that's what they would have us to believe, that righteousness is not going to get you anywhere. So, just get yourself involved in a little corruption. Do a little touch and go here and there. Because righteousness not getting you anywhere. Are you still maintaining your integrity? And sometimes the question comes from the most unexpected people. People who you think would not know say you're Christian. And know that you can't do some of the suggestions that they're making. But them come same way. People who you think should know better. Those who are close to you. Family members sometimes. Can you imagine the wife of Job asking him. Are you still maintaining your integrity? And she did not even wait for an answer. She just went on and said curse God and die. Are you still maintaining your integrity? Why live for God? Why should I live for God? Why should I maintain my righteousness and continue to face one hardship after another? One test, one trial after another. It's just pure hardship. So every time I turn is something different. What is it? Why should I continue to live right before God? And I want to say that if you have been having those thoughts, that is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, dismiss that lie. Dismiss that lie in the name of Jesus. All right? Here, is a, here are the first three things I want you to take note of. There are three things to be aware of when faced with hardships or while you are going through adversity. Three things that we need to be aware of. Number one, God is sovereign and therefore always in control. God is sovereign and therefore always in control. And God is sovereign in good times. He is sovereign in bad times. He is always in control. Never lost control. The devil has to be in consultation with God before he comes your way. God is sovereign and always in control. I don't know about you, but that is good news for me. God is sovereign and always in control. I don't know why God allows me to go through this, but he, if he allows it, it means that I can make it. So God is sovereign and therefore always in control. That's the first thing we need to remember, to be aware of when we are going through our, our tests and our trials and our adversities. Number two is this, Satan is limited in his power. God said to Satan, all right, you can go ahead. You can touch him, but you must spare his life. Satan could not touch Job's life because God did not give him the word to do so. Satan is limited in his power. So everything that is happening in your family this morning and whatever you see going on in this country, I want us to understand that Satan is on a leash and God will draw him in when the time is right. The people of God must continue to pray and to maintain your integrity. Satan cannot do anything to you outside of what God allows. And if God allows it, it is for a purpose. And therefore, we must maintain our integrity every step of the way. I don't know if you have been rejected. It's for a purpose. 
I don't know what you have gone through, but it is for a purpose. There is no experience that you have that will be wasted when you continue to maintain your integrity before the Lord because God takes pleasure in vindicating his people. God is sovereign and always in control. Satan is limited in his power. Here's the third thing that we need to be aware of and always remember. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. It might seem hard now. You might be wondering if you're really going to make it. But God's grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in weakness. Second Corinthians 12 verse 9. I want somebody to know this morning that you will get through it. For God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. Just when you think you can't go any further, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and gives you a little bit more fuel to go on. And he gives you a new mindset, a fresh burst of energy. And you say, yes, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. God's grace is sufficient. Three things to be aware of when you are in your adversity or faced with hardships. God is sovereign and always in control. Satan is limited in his power and God's grace is sufficient. I want us to understand church that there will there will be seasons of adversity or hardships. So we need to prepare ourselves to hold fast to our integrity in Jesus' name. We need to prepare ourselves. And in order to prepare, I want to give you these three things that you must use and be mindful of in your preparation to maintain your integrity. Number one, attitude. Two, stewardship mindset. And three, expectations. Attitude. I want you to jump with me over to Luke chapter 18. And let's look at this attitude issue. For all of us who have at some point said, Why me? Why me? Why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? I should not be going through this. Luke chapter 18 verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness. Confident of their own righteousness. And looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Alright, listen up. Jesus is about to speak. Let's hear him. Let's hear what Jesus says. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Self-righteousness, that. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. Listen to the last part of what Jesus said. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Can I tell you that our attitude must be one of humility before the Lord. Instead of asking why me? Why not say why not me? Because God has a purpose and a plan. And he has a certain grace that he has given to every believer. So when we go through tests and trials, the first thing we must recognize is, one, ensure that the attitude is right. Job, the first thing Job did when he got the news was, the Bible says he worshipped and that worship is a humility 
before God. Humility before God. He laid prostrate, recognizing that everything he could ever have and own was owned by God. It is the Lord who gives and the Lord will take away. But see me here, God, I'm still going to serve you. The Bible says that Job, in all this, Job did not charge God with wrongdoing. In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. In all this, Job never called anybody and complain. In all this, Job did not get angry at God. Job did not assume a high-minded, prideful position to say, imagine I am living for you, God, and look at what you have done to me. Ten children in one day. Ten children in one day. And on top of that, skin disease. Wow. But Job, in all this, Job did not sin by what he said. In order to prepare to maintain our integrity, we must have the right attitude. And that attitude must be humility before the Lord. Let us humble ourselves before God who is sovereign. The second thing is the stewardship mindset. That's what I call it, the stewardship mindset. First thing, the Bible says that um, in Psalm 24, Verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Stewardship mindset is this, that it is God who owns everything. And we are all managers of the gifts, the time, the talents, and the treasures that God has given to us. Can I remind you, church, that there is nothing at all that you have that God didn't give to you or allowed you to have it. It's not yours in the first place so let us start begin begin to to think about it like that that it, we are managers of that which God has given to us and I tell you that is the most liberating mindset that you could have because why you think some people go mad when certain things happen to them if house burned down and so on they can't function anymore you have to put them in an institution because God they didn't recognize that God is the one who owns it and you are just a manager and therefore the God who gives and the God who takes away he will give again when we understand that our source is God and that we should be depending on God and that all that we are and have should be grounded in God, God is the only constancy and the only stability in this life. Everything else wavers and I do mean everything else. God doesn't. So the stewardship mindset, we must have a stewardship mindset. God owns everything. We are managers of everything that he has given to us. And thirdly, expectations. Expectations. We must be mindful of our expectations as we prepare to maintain our integrity. God always delivers. Satan always lies. In John 8, 44, the Bible says he's the father of lies and that when he speaks, he speaks lies, which is his native language. I want to say never give in to the world and what the world says. If you give in to what the world says, you will miss out on what God has for you. If we give in, you will miss out on what God has to do. As for you. Finally, I want to give us three reasons to maintain our integrity. Why should you, why should I maintain my integrity? Continue to live right before the Lord. I want to give us three reasons. Number one, the latter will be greater. The latter will be greater. I want us to think about it carefully. What if Job had sinned when he, when, when, when he started to go through his season of adversity? 
Job was not able to see how his situation was going to end. But he trusted God. Unreserved trust in God. And Job went through hell. How did Job's story end? Let's jump over to Job chapter 42, the last chapter in Job. And let me tell you how Job's story end. Job chapter 42, and I will read verse 10. And then verse 12 and 13. Verse 10 says, After Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored... Said the Lord restored. The Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Why? <laughs> now I wanted to think about that because Job was a wealthy man in the beginning. But now he had double what he had before. Let's look at verse 12. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more, more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 and, uh, yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The same wife, you know. Is with the same wife. Job never married again, and she never dead. And the same wife. <laughs> Come have ten more pitney. <laughs> what a God, what a God, what a God. And look at, the, so, so I want us to recognize, now look at what Job would have been missing out on if he did not maintain his integrity in the face of his adversity. So I want us to understand that your latter will be greater. So maintain your integrity. It may not seem like it right now, but your test will end. Secondly, why should you maintain your integrity? Because God called us to be holy. God called us to be holy. And holiness is not for some time. Holiness is not when you feel like it or when things are good. In good times and bad times, take it one day at a time. God called us to be holy. Let us look at 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. This is what the Bible says. But just as he who called you is holy... So be holy in all you do. Be holy in what? All that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Holiness, church, is for all times. So don't give in to the world and the temptations that come your way when you're going through a hard time and all kind of evil or suggestions. Maintain your integrity. Walk holy before the Lord because in the end, we win. Did you know that? In the end, we win. When you read the scriptures, even in the Psalms and places in Proverbs as well, sometimes the wicked look like they are prospering, but their end is coming. The righteous, in the end, we win. We must maintain our integrity. And thirdly, finally, why should we maintain our integrity? The truth is, that trusting God is learned during hard times. It's easy. Easy to say that we trust God when things are good. And can I tell you that it's when things are not so good that we know whether you trust God or not. Trusting God is learned. That's when we learn how to trust God during the hard times during the times when emotionally we were a wreck and we didn't know that we would have gotten past that but we say god i trust you i need you to help me through this god is always good 
And God will always have good reasons for the things that he allows to happen in our lives. And you know what? If God could just give us a glimpse of the end, then maybe we will be more willing to endure because we know where it's going. But the reality is, God does not always give us a glimpse of the end. That's why we need to learn to trust him. One day at a time, one step at a time, we need to learn to trust him. So the question this morning is, are you still maintaining your integrity? I hope you are. Wow, 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 wow. I trust that you were blessed by that word. And thank you for staying with me until the end. And you know what is interesting? As we talk about integrity, sometimes maintaining your integrity doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to the world that is watching. But as long as we maintain our integrity, we know that God will reward us in due time i trust that you were blessed and i hope that you are you have been challenged i hope that you have been challenged until next time always remember god speaks